Hello friends, welcome to my Princess Diana channel. Before moving on to the video, if you are not subscribed to my channel, do not forget to subscribe and turn on notifications, so let's move on to the video. All of this only accentuates Megan's apparent insecurities and fear during the polo match, which took place in contrast to the ostentation and grandeur of the surroundings. She was afraid that shared actions with Harry would lead to her losing many privileges, which is why he was mandatory to sign what was addressed as a seal of sovereignty, making a promise only to her. Given the occasion of a glamorous polo match, which had been witnessed not only by Lady Victoria Hervey but also arguably by camera crews filming the event, which eventually led to Meghan's Netflix deal, it seems that the Duchess decided to put the metaphorical sovereignty seal on Harry. This was evident when another woman tried to pose for a picture after the trophy presentation, yet the Duchess demanded that only her take turns being next to Harry, who appeared more a utilitarian than a companion or husband. Indeed, all of the actions organized at the Centennial Polo Cup in Florida, which supported the charities Harry had co-founded in the name of aiding the youth of Southern Africa in 2006, seemed to position Meghan as an insecure woman close to people unfamiliar with the rules and principles of appropriate behavior. A particularly acclaimed editor argued that the sundress and sandals have revealed the true colors of Meghan's interaction with Dr. Sophie Shanduka stand near her during the celebration, seemingly berating the latter for placing herself next to Harry. This action remains derogatory in many different ways, where Meghan had managed to provide a negative image for viewers who expected to see otherwise. Subsequently, Harry's team proceeded to win both games, which culminated in an act of public intimacy when Meghan kissed Harry in the presence of about 300 onlookers. Jonah notes that the above events could have served as a source of pride for all concerned people. Unfortunately, Harry failed to realize that they won because of the commitment of the other persons or, at least, portrayed them as the only reason for the win. Moreover, her behavior towards Dr. Shanduka when she failed to allow the latter to award the trophy also indicates the roles they play in the couple's public life. However, I am puzzled about her appearance prevalently, not Dr. Shanduka. It also astonishes me to an extent that onlookers have spoken about such incidents before, such as during Invictus and at other times, with Harry always competing while Meghan appears to take a more ceremonial part. Hence, it becomes a reason for pondering for many people and even draws disapproval. It would also astonish if people learned that Prince Harry has possibly become a US cisgenetic cisability, which will further severe his connection with the UK and the family. Many individuals look forward to a phase where he will have no connections with the UK or his family. I am sure it will make him lead a better life given the many problems people associate with him as a royal traitor. Harry's involvement in a polo is also practices such sports that have elicited critics concerning how they treat horses. One allegation claimed that his overusage of spurs went ahead to kill his best horse. It brings out a lot of differences between his words when it comes to animal protection and what he does. Having Meghan present at the charity event called everything into question, particularly the photos taken of her and the moment of presenting the trophy. Critics think the trophy should have been presented by Sophie Chandaka, the charity's leader. It is hard to deny that in this case, the competition for a man seems to be the root cause of issues on Meghan's side, she might be very insecure that someone else might outshine her, or even worse, take Harry away. The uncertainties depict the characters' associations under serious doubts and fears, hence, both Harry and Meghan do not feel comfortable in their roles. Regarding Meghan and Harry's relationship, it is hard to hide that their personalities are so interconnected that they are better off together. The divorce might not only hurt society but leave them alone since nobody will want them in their old age. Therefore, Meghan's personality, with all of her attempts to be in the limelight, slightly spoiled her reputation. She has nothing to do with the polo event and does not contribute to that team, but she tries to be present in the photos that are meant to be used on occasion. Source, 
customer provided. Her need for lights and these photos reflect her poorly. Indeed, it depicts her as the typical child, who would stand next to me in your first most substantial way. This tendency spread on Harry as well. He uses Centibale and Invictus Games as their patron to reveal macabre event details to be more recognized, considering that he has to fulfill obligations. The assumption that money is a large motivator of Megan's behavior leads its audience to be skeptical about everything she does. Anything that she does nicely or wants to do peacefully will have ulterior intentions. It is undoubtedly a model that will be lucrative, but I am unable to ascertain whether it is one that can be managed without catastrophic consequences for their picture or personal connections. The Netflix documentary, where she goes out of her way to stay in touch with Harry, appears to have been anticipated with almost embarrassed recognition, may have played a role. However, the majority of the public is astonished that such a clear delusion can. The one in which she is bossy, in the same manner, was with an aide, making him fetch a sharpie for banana communications. The care she treats even with the natural parents is sickening and sniveling, not seeing what it seems is absurd. It might have been like that with a royal family, but nonetheless not with a kind of openness. These public displays of excessive affection are cringeworthy. They make one wince because their behavior, publicly at least, demonstrates a far too self-centered atmosphere. It indicates an insensitivity to the simple minds of others who frequently exist in their personal space. It's also possible that a show of affection on the part of one individual might be embarrassing or annoying to others, perhaps something akin to harassment. However, anybody who isn't an in-your-face PDA-style observer feels incredibly insecure. That, to me, is just aggravating and distful. There's no more hiding behind Megan's face. The overexpressionism and dominance of all things loving and loud had already given her away. Harry, on the other hand, does not seem to have encountered the efforts of others on his day. It's like such a big difference compared to how Kate and William do it, in that true love is being shown to the world. Being the future monarchs, Catherine and William do not display their lovely feelings in public and are rumored to have reserved all their sentimental moments for their closet. Meghan never wanted to validate her spot in every picture, but rather just about every photograph taken. As not to only dilute any interest Meghan had in the photo of Dr. Chandaka along with Harry, or even worse, cut her out entirely, which she just couldn't allow. Centibale is one of those foundations from Botswana that Meghan was not affiliated with at the time. She had used him for her own selfish reasons, and Harry may be okay with being whipped good by her in the public eye. But the rest of their interactions show control power issues, making Harry's life miserable. In addition, I find a lot to be a bit cringeworthy when it comes to their PDA being publicized. That level of tolling is ignorant to others and manifests a distinctive sort of entitlement at the underground line. But these antics of vengeance are deployed to crush innocent bystanders, a manner that is absolutely intolerable. After all, the reason why the Netflix cameras were at the Omaha Polo Party is due to the emotion that would come while teaching individuals how to play. However, that will all fall when Harry Falcon strikes her stallion, who takes advantage of spouts. Eventually, the Omaha Polo Party is broadcast as a harsh and humorous sport. This couple drives me mad. Or am I the only one who believes this is completely disgusting? Please provide feedback in the comments section below. As a result, we will depart on a quick detour. Would you be willing to give such a romantic display in public as Meghan and Harry did? What if you will be in my situation? and it is going to happen to show your actions right ahead of your eyes. Public demonstrations of affection seem to be permitted by certain people as independent expressions of affection and relations. They argue that a person is at liberty to exhibit his feelings. Yeah, it is real. However, the public expression of affection seems to be utilizing one's personal life and disavowal others' mental well-being and privacy. Other people share public places, so someone's privacy or psychological integrity should not be sabotaged. Please tell me whether you agree with them. Furthermore, Megan's mad behavior have not ceased at then. 
what is happening after the match has left individuals more than appalled. It is akin to childish behavior, not to say more and, of course, new filming for a Netflix series. After all, what they had just brought out was a human product, and public reaction was to be expected. After the game, Harry and Meghan were seen posing for photos with the family of celebrated polo player Nacho Figueres, who is also one of Harry's best friends, as they filmed for the Prince's upcoming series on Elite Sports. The really astonishing moment came when Meghan was noticed to embrace the sportsman. With him were his wife, Delphina Blackear, and their eight-year-old daughter Alba, in Palm Beach, Florida. Meghan showed full lack of boundaries towards her husband's friends. Can she think of a flirt with her husband's friend too? What a silly thought. If I were Nacho Figudson's wife, I think I must have done what she had done. When Meghan pushed Dr. Sophie Chandaka away from Harry, my reaction would have been. She had always been aggressive and uncouth when on the stage of the Centibale Polo Cup. However, why had she even hugged someone else's husband while a doctor? Sophie Chandaka remained standing there courteously. Meghan also showed disrespect to the children present, amongst whom was the daughter of the athlete. This one could always wonder, what example is she setting for her own kids at home? Hopefully, they will grow up under her guidance to be upstanding citizens. The parents become mirrors that reflect the development of their children, and the children in turn will reflect the upbringing of their parents. A responsible parent will bring up children under his care to develop into valuable members of society. What about Megan? How will she raise her children? Will she instill values of loyalty, moderation, and humility, or will she teach them betrayal, ambition, and excess? The awkward encounter was captured during filming for Prince Harry's Polo series, one of two non-fiction series commissioned by Netflix. Then came the strange moment, with Meghan going over to Nacho's wife to give her an awkward open-armed embrace. That was a very endearing gesture, a child's or rather a young one's gesture, seeking the comfort and affection of the parent. A human touch, the two women were later caught walking with their arms around each other, heads close together. It was most likely a staged show of friendship. After all, is there a person on earth who has so much admiration for this Megan? For a woman who would not sense any limit with her own husband, how on earth would she sense the same for her in return? There must be workings underneath. This has never required pointing that out to anybody. Fact always remained that she is behaving like a child. This was one of her predicted behavior traits, wherein she pretends to be innocent and sweet to people about whom she knows very little. After all, they are more of Harry's friends. And then, maybe Nacho and his wife are besties with the Duke and Duchess of Montecito. They didn't invite the couple to lodge in their Wellington, Florida mansion while in Florida. Wow, so you are close then, or just a bunch of prearranged scenarios? So, Mrs. Nacho is being paid by Netflix to appear as though she were besties with Megan. Poor woman. Hope it was a big fat check. She deserves it. According to my information, Harry and Megan are working on two TV series. The one for Harry is about polo, and Megan's is a cookery show. First impressions looking at Megan, she's elbowing her way into Harry's polo documentary. I wonder how much Harry will appear on Megan's cookery show. For readers of a certain age in the UK, I suddenly had visions of Fanny Craddock and Johnny. Their marriage is as counterfeit as their public pretense. It's human nature, and it's how exploitative value Megan has for the couple Nacho Figueres and his wife. It won't last long. M.M. will use them, and once they are used up, she will move on to the next victim. Leopards don't change their spots. Its track record speaks for itself. There's more, the lifestyles of the rich and famous are perfectly suited. The Duchess had to wear the stilettos that height differences wouldn't, quite conspicuously show off her short frame, especially standing up next to Delphina. That is way too over-collared. Let me see how long they will pretend to be rich. 
a very strange kind of doing for those people who have stepped aside from their duties, just because they wanted to have a private life. I have just heard about Megan with her husband, they really need privacy, but all the time, they would want to be on air, filming, doing charity work, meeting famous people. So, that's why you need privacy. That's right, a hero of the air. He had failed his helicopter pilot test three times. Had only succeeded in getting on with a rear gunner job at best. He had a brother who was a Royal Air Force search and rescue pilot, apart from being an air ambulance pilot. I know who I would give the title of hero, and it's definitely not one who buys himself awards or has spent a deployment hiding in a heavily guarded underground bunker and playing computer games. The royal family is definitely lucky to have Willem. I would think, the royal family could have stopped with only Harry, and see where the UK would be now. Probably it would be colonized by another empire. But okay, let's sympathize with Harry and Meghan. I would go along to disagree in the sense that both of us are the youngest child in our families, respectively. One with a mommy that's absent, and a daddy who's overcompensating, and another with a dead mother, and a nanny, Tiggy, overcompensating for the loss of the mommy figure, giving in to their every want and desire dot 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 dot, as has been pointed out. That is where two human beings meet and bring out the pain in them. I believe that the people in the UK, and even the people in the US, will look upon them as good people, having in mind what they underwent in the past. This is, however, not to say that their ordeal is not acknowledged or that they suffered it willingly but instead as a calamity that befell them and from which they had to get out. Rejection and critiques are all the more reason to make sure I outdo myself. As for the run-in with the famous polo player Nacho Figueres, it was just another example of Markle being thrust into the limelight, feeling special, and even seeking attention. As for her series on cooking, gardening, and friendship, one gets a feeling of doubt if she has friends or even if she cooks, save to pluck the cooked duck from the tree, or gardens beyond picking the fruit from off the trees. Megan is always looking for the spotlight and always wants to be the center stage. Her constant need to be attended to really is an obvious lack of confidence, which is brought out by insecurity and fear. Fortunately, Harry does not argue with her, not even daring to mutter a word of objection. Ending the romantic story here, I would turn to a more interesting subject. But despite all these expressions of love and huge relations, it seems that their relationship is falling apart. Paparazzi of late captured the couple having a heated altercation at the Four Seasons Hotel, with sources purporting that Prince Harry has caught Meghan cheating. This is something that would only darken the relationship between the two further and strain it with added pressure, allegations of cheating against someone like Raikkonen at the Four Seasons. Terry's recent statement that the United States is his main home has provided further food for some of the British tabloid newspapers. Taken against the backdrop of continuing turmoil within the royal family since their withdrawal from senior royal duties in 2020, this latest move carries huge weight. So it does reflect deep complications, further compounded by Harry's troubled past and upbringing. Though Harry himself has come out to the public, stating that he is in search of a more peaceful life, his implications are very huge. He has a history of substance abuse during his teenage years, and it has put shame on the royal family. Harry could signal his intent for shelter from the unrelenting media spotlight and the burdens of royal duty by taking up permanent residency outside the UK. If anything, the decision to set up a permanent abode in the United States can only further amplify the ongoing speculation that has surrounded the fraught dynamics between Harry and his brother, Prince William. Rumors of discord that have haunted them for years now take on a new lease of life, with much of the disapproval supposedly coming from William, who apparently disapproved of Harry's choice to step back from royal duties and to marry Meghan Markle. This move across the vast flank of the Atlantic Ocean could result in an extra tier of complexity for their already beleaguered relationship, besides straining the scenario. However, they suppose that there exist perspectives that suggest financial independence as the main reasons that drove Harry and Meghan to take up their new line of actions. By then living, however, in the United States, 
they gained a higher degree of independence to chart their own course without the limitations of royal protocol. Another view to this strategic move could also be an effort to save their family from the immense media glare and scrutiny put upon them. Felt in the United Kingdom Closer scrutiny of this matter, however, shows that alternative perspectives may indeed demonstrate that Harry and Meghan's decision to move to the U.S. was actually prompted by quite a number of reasons. While independence and the ability to make choices toward philanthropic pursuits that are definitely more dominant attractive forces, it is likely that other nuanced considerations play into their choice. Moving to the other side of the Atlantic, the royal couple saw a greater independence opportunity and perhaps a chance at charting a more personally fulfilling course without the sidetracking demands and traditions that come with royal protocol and tradition. This strategic move is actually a conscious step towards reclaiming control of their own lives and destinies so that they could write their narrative outside the bounds of the British monarchy. Besides, the decision to stay in the U.S. could be seen as a very possible way for them to escape the frenzied media attention and public glare that dogged them in the U.K. The move offers them the kind of privacy and isolation that was fast slipping from their grasp back home, hiding them from the prying eyes of the tabloid press and, therefore, leading more relaxed and real lives. Essentially, with a view towards financial independence, or active philanthropy, at that, while both of these urges may have been driving forces behind the relocation, the final decision to settle in the U.S. represents more than the simple management of capital, rather, it is a wider search for independence, privacy, and this reflects the desire to be over and done with the confinements of tradition and expectation, to chart a fresh a course that would be far more commensurate with what their individual values and aspirations actually are. Though this controversy of drug using would have had no direct impact on Harry's decision to relocate, this would have deepened the layers of drama in the story. This incident would point out to the difficulty that Harry is dealing with, i.e., reconciliation between his royal persona and personal turmoil. His move to live in America could be seen as an attempt, on the part of some quarters, to get away from such scrutiny and, well, maybe clear the path unencumbered by baggage from his past and royal connections. That's it for our video my friends, I hope you have liked it. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments, and like the video. If you haven't done so yet if you want to be first to be informed about my content, please subscribe to the channel and make sure you turn on notifications. Thank you for spending this time with me, take care of yourself and stay healthy. I'll see you in the next one.